हमें दूसरा बच्चे आने वाले हैं कि नहीं Okay, such a big signature, no need to write it so much. Very 
The true identity of the person. I can see you now in your true colors. All the time you were, you know, already you had a, you had a camouflage. You were, well, you were hiding behind, behind a facade, an outside covering. But now you see you in your true colors. Here it actually means he saw him in his true colors because he scraped that mother and took him one month. That shows the clay soil that must have been, must have been there in Iraq. Mijmin, as I call the utter, was in fact of a race previously unknown to science and was at length questioned by zoologist Nutru Kale Persilata Maxwell or Maxwell's otter. Maxwell's otter because Maxwell is the first person who did a study of his otter. So in short, they call him Maxwell's otter. For the first 24 hours, Mitchell was neither hostile nor friendly. He was simply aloof and indifferent. <coughs> aloof means far away from me and indifferent. It made no difference. He didn't bother about my presence at the house. Choosing to sleep on the floor as far from my bed as possible. The second night, Mitchell came onto my bed in the small hours and remain asleep in the crook of my knees. Crook of my knees, this is the crook of the arm. The crook of the needle and the knees are folded in that position. He was resting in the crook of my knees until the servant brought tea in the morning and during the day he began to lose his appetite and take a keen, much too keen interest in his surrounding. Appetite means for he was now losing his sense of interest. Okay, and, and he was taking a very keen and much too keen interest in his surroundings. I made a body belt for it. What's a body belt? Oh, like, a harness, a harness, like a harness, harness, like a harness. I made a body belt for him and took him on a lead to the bathroom, where for half an hour he went wild with joy in the water, plunging and rolling in it, shooting up and down the length of the bathroom underwater and making enough slush and splash for a hippo, hippo is hippopotamus, okay? This I was to learn is a characteristic of otters. Every drop of water must be, so to speak, extended and spread about the place. A bowl must be at once be overturned or if it will not be overturned, be satin and slush in until the pork flow. So what he says is, if there's a drop of water, he was so naughty that he would spread it all over. Okay? And if there was a bowl of water, it had to be overturned. And if it was not overturned, he would sit in it and try to splash the water out. Water must be kept on the move and made to do things. When static, it is wasted and provoking. So he says water has to do something. Spread it out, waste it. Okay, and if it is quietly remaining there, what happens is it is settled. The static means quietly in one place. That water, it is not doing anything in the eyes of the otter, it's wasted and provoking. Provoking means irritating. Two days later, Mitchell escaped from my bedroom as I entered it. And I turned to see his face disappearing around the bend of the corridor that led to the bathroom. By the time I got there, he was up on the end of the bathroom and fumbling at the chromium taps with his paws. So he's trying to open up the taps. I watched amazed. In less than a minute, he had turned the tap far enough to produce a trickle of water. And after a moment or two, achieved the full flow. He opened up the tap completely. He had been lucky to turn the tap the right way. On later occasions, he would sometimes screw it up, still tighter, chittering and irritation, with irritation and disappointment at the tap's failure to cooperate. If he was making a noise and anger, he would be irritated because the tap was not letting out any water. Why was the tap not letting out any water that was in my picture? Why was it not letting out any water, the tap? Huh? How did we, how was it closed? How did it become closed? How did that get closed? How did that get closed? At the back. It was opening it in the wrong direction. The 
author was opening it in the wrong direction and in trying to open it, he was tightening it. Very soon Mitch would follow me without a lead and come to me when I called his name. Without a lead means that harness, okay, without that lead. And come to me when I called his name. He spent most of his time in play. He spent hours shuffling a rubber ball round the room like a four-footed sucker playing, using all four feet to dribble the ball, and he would also throw it with a powerful flick of the neck to a surprising height and distance. What's meaning of dribbling the ball? Hitting it in. That's called dribbling the ball. But it can also mean passing the ball between your feet. And it, yeah, but in this case, yeah, that is off the feet. And you have to avoid your opponent and try to make sure that the ball doesn't go into his hands until you reach the goal post. Correct. But in the case of this fellow, he was just dribbling it. Number one. But the real play of an author is when he lies on his back and juggles with small objects between his paws. You know, like the like a cat. Like a cat with the yarn. Yeah, like a cat or even a juggler, or he throws you know, how many balls up. No? Okay. Marbles were Mitch's favorite toys for this past time. He would lie on his back, rolling two or more of them up and down his wide, flat belly without ever dropping one on the floor. He would move up and down the marbles up and down on his stomach without letting it fall off. The days passed peacefully at Basra, but I dreaded the prospect of transporting Mitch to England and to Campus Fierna. The British airline to London would not fly animals, so I booked a flight to Paris on another airline and from there to London. So he was going from Basra to Paris and from Paris to London. The airline insisted that it should be packed into a box not more than 18 inches square to be carried on the floor at my feet. I had a box made an hour before we started. I put Mitch into the box so that he would become accustomed to it and left for a hurried meal. When I returned, there was an appalling spectacle, shocking. Appalling means shocking spectacle. There was complete silence from the box, but from its air holes and chimps around the lid, blood had trickled and dried. I whipped off the lock and tore open the lid, and Mitch, exhausted and blood spattered, whimpered and caught at my leg. He had torn the lining of the box to shreds. When I removed the last of it so that there were no cutting edges left, it was just 10 minutes until the time of the flight and the airport was five miles distant. What is talking about? There were no cutting edges. What cutting edges is he talking about? There were no cutting edges. I removed the last of it so that there were no cutting edges left. See, the box was made. And the box had edges, and those edges could be cut in with the opera had very soft flesh. So what did he put a lining? He put a he soft the lining. So the yeah, he there. put a nice soft lining, and this otter was locked up there for one hour. When, uh, when he went to have a meal, he went and tore that lining. He tore that lining. And what did he do? When did he do it? And it was just one hour that he leave Basra to go to the airport. I put the visible image back into the box holding down the lid with my hand. I sat in the back of the car with the box beside me as the driver tore through the streets of the sky like a ricocheting bullet, which went very fast. Why did he go very fast? Why was the driver driving very fast? Because what? He was trying to make it in time for the flight. The aircraft was waiting to take off. I was rushed through it by an infuriated officials. Infuriated means angry, very angry officials. Luckily, the seat book for me was at the extreme front. I covered the floor around my feet with newspapers, rang for the air hostess, and gave her a parcel of fish for Mitch to keep in a cool place. I took her into my confidence about the events of the last half hour. I had obtained the most profound admiration for that air hostess. She was the very queen of her time. Profoundly deep admiration. 
be admired uh, because of her kindness. She suggested that I might prefer to have my pet on my knee and I could have kissed her hand in the depth of my gratitude. But not knowing orders, I was quite unprepared for what had followed. Here, what did it mean when the queen of her mind? The very queen, she was the epitome of kindness. She was the queen. Okay, when she was behaving so beautifully and she took so much of, so many instructions in her own and the risks, she took in her own hand as if she was the ruling queen of that area. She broke all protocol only to accommodate that doctor on his lap. They're not supposed to bring animals in the, in the, the passenger cabin, not at all, but she allowed him because Otto was very small. Okay, she allowed him. Rich was out of the box in her flesh. He disappeared at high speed down the aircraft. There were squawks and shrieks and a woman stood up on her seat screaming out, a rat, a rat. It was very small. I caught sight of Rich's tail disappearing between the legs of a portly white turban Indian. Portly white turban, portly Indian. Very big stomach. And a fat short and fat. Fat chair, yeah, fat chair. See, what is it? Stout chair, fat chair. Indian. Diving for it, I missed, but found my face covered in curry. Perhaps, said the air hostess with the most charming smile, it will be better if you resume your seat and I will find the animal and bring it to you. How did he land up with curry on his face? How did the author gather it? Land up with curry on his face. On his track with Archie Potter. And in doing so, uh, he might have put a tray or something. Yeah, because people must have been eating their food. Yeah. So he ducked under it and the tray full of curry landed on his face. I returned to my seat. I was craning my neck trying to follow the hunt. But suddenly I heard from my feet a distressed chitter of recognition and welcome. And Mitch bounded onto my knee and began to nuzzle my face and my neck. Mitch and I remained in London for nearly a month. He would play for hours with a selection of toys, ping pong balls, marbles. What are the ping pong ball balls? The bouncy balls. Huh? They're mini balls, the small light like, to white The same ball that you play tennis with. They were tennis. Mitch and I remained in London. For nearly a month, he would play for hours with a selection of toys, ping pong balls, marbles, rubber fruit, and a terrapin shell that I had brought back from his native marshes. With a ping pong ball, he invented a game of his own, which could keep him engrossed for up to half an hour at a time. A suitcase that I had taken to Iraq had become damaged on the journey home so that the lid, when closed, remained at a slope from one end to the other. Mitch discovered that if he placed the ball on the high end, it would run down the length of the suitcase. He would dash around to the other end to ambush its rabbit. Ambush means to attack, to attack the ball and keep it in his mouth. Hide from it, crouching to spring up and take it by surprise. Grab it and trot off with it to the other end once more, to the high end once more. I'm sure the game, no? If you are into the game, you keep it here, the ball will come sliding down. By the time you would come running around and hide and wait till the ball came. It was faster than the ball. When the ball came up, then you would go back again and resume the play. Outside the outhouse, I exercised him on a lead, precisely as if he had been a dog, which will quickly develop certain compulsive habits on these walks in the London streets like the rituals of children who on their way to and from school must place their feet squarely on the center of each paving block, must touch every seventh upright of the Ryan Ale railings or pass to the outside of every second lamp post. Are you understanding what we meant here? Are you understanding this? Did you understand? Yes or no? Yes. Did you understand? This girl, did you understand? What happens is when the children are walking, they have the paved, paved uh, flooring, so they have paved road, so they have those tiles, they may be having a tile, a particular design. 
to do the work, put your know, put on the yellow tags and go for the first year, for the second. They wanted to be placed their feet on those yellow tags only. Okay, or uh, there were railings, correct? And while they were walking, they had to touch the seven railing. It's a game. Children have these compulsive habits. Okay, while they are going to school. So he said, like just as the children have some compulsive habits of keeping or placing their feet on particular color tiles or touching the seventh bar of the railing, my author also had peculiar habits. What were they? He said to us. Opposite to my flat was a single story primary school, along whose frontage ran a low wall some two feet high. On his way home, but never on his way out. Mitch would tap me to his ball, jump on it, and gallop the full length of his 30 yards to the hopeless distraction of both pupils and a staff with him. So he would pull and pull and pull the author, that's the Gavin, and run up and down that ball, thereby distracting the children who were in the classroom and the teachers who were in the classroom. He would run up and down the wall. Okay? It is not, I suppose, in any way strange that the average Londoner should not recognize an otter. Why is it that an average Londoner should not be able to recognize an otter? Why? Because maybe they don't. It is not a common. It's not a common animal there. It's a common animal only in the Iran, Basra, that those areas, but not in the Middle East. Okay, in the Arab country, but not in a European country. It is not, I suppose, in any way strange that the average landowner should not recognize an author, but the variety of guesses as to what kind of animal this might be came as a surprise to me. Authors belong to a comparatively small group of animals called musclines, shared by the badger, or the mongoose, or a weasel, a stoat, a mink, and others. I faced a continuous barrage of conjectural questions that sprayed over the mustelins, but the author more random guesses hit on a baby seal and a squirrel. So all the answers, the one that was so called, most of them say, said that it was either baby squirrel or a baby seal. They were the most random. Pardon me? Yes, they were the most random. Among them, they were the most random, which settled and suited this animal. Okay? Is that a walrus? Reduce me to millions. And outside a dog showed, I heard a dog show. I heard a hippo, a beaver, a bear cub, a leopard, one apparently that had changed its spots. And a brontosaur, which was anything but an author. But the question for which I awarded the highest score came from a laborer digging a hole in the street. I was still far from him when he laid down his tool. He put his hands on his hip and began to stare. As I drew nearer, I saw his expression of surprise and affront, as though he would have me know that he was not one upon whom to play jokes. I came abreast of him. I came abreast of him means I came up to him. Abreast means one at the side of the other, it's called being abreast. Okay? He spat, he glared, and then growled out, Here, mister, what is that supposed to be? He didn't say what it is, but he just asked him what exactly that animal is supposed to be. But what is the animal? What is it? And what is it supposed to be? Because this will, uh, this will must be a This will be a Who asked? Everybody was guessing. It's only one this person. What is it supposed to be? Okay, but it's asking also a very fantastic. What the hell is it supposed to be? Okay. Sometimes at you have seen a big lizard running across the road, not here, no, this is rush, at Nerul. You find them coming out from the gutters. Huge big lizard, lizard running around on the road. They immediately change their colors also to match the tower of the road. I have seen, I have seen myself. Very peculiar creature and seldom seen, very seldom seen. Frightening actually, very frightening. Okay. So you have all understood the lesson? Yes. Yes or no? Now start with the volume. Any first read the lesson? Any difficulties? Ask me, please. Yeah. What happened? Where's your volume? Your volume? First read the lesson. 
First read the next one. Raise your volume. All of you got your time. Raise your volume. First read the lesson and book the experiment. Experiment. Put your bags in between.